Get the power to do more with storable software, more automating, more control, more revenue, more time back in your day. Storable helps operators do more with the most powerful technology in self-storage. Learn more at storable.com slash do more. Appreciate you everybody joining us for today's webinar. Uh, we are gonna be discussing um, access control in particular today. And I've bought a, I brought a couple of uh, really savvy operators with us on, that I'm gonna introduce here in just a moment to kind of uh, uh, be able to discuss uh, some of the most topical things as we see related to access control and specifically kind of the broader webinar series we've been discussing. So this idea of you know tenants and operators shifting to digital forms of engagement, access control is a really critical part of that. So we're gonna be discussing that um, in an operator roundtable here in just a moment. Quick introduction, my name is Matthew Beal and I'm a product marketing manager here at Storable. And so my role is to kind of keep an ear down to the industry and hear what's going on and what people are trying to solve for, what are the main market forces everyone's hearing and addressing, um, and to be able to tie that back to Storable's suite of, of solutions. But these webinars in particular are kind of one of my favorite parts of the job because I really do get an opportunity to not only have a couple of operators on for a round table like we do today, but all of your guys' questions and the chats and all these things that are coming in are incredibly valuable for us to be able to just understand how you guys are thinking about the world and, and what's working, what's not working, and all of that. So again, I just highly encourage participation. I very much appreciate it from you guys. I wanted to give a quick bit of context, and I'm gonna go through this very quickly because I want the majority of today's conversation to be spent hearing from, from Calvin and Miles, who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, but the topic in today's discussion is related to this market force of shift to digital. And so the idea here is that at the early days of COVID, people were forced to adopt these digital forms of engagement, especially like contactless experiences, because we had to keep you know, health uh, as the number one priority for both our managers and for our tenants. And so um, out of that is what, you know, we have seen that that has continued to increase. That hasn't slowed down even in this kind of post-vaccine world where people are more comfortable getting out and about. But access control is a super critical part of that, um, that experience. Uh, and so today's discussion is to be able to talk about um, how does access control help you deliver on that optimal tenant experience and to be able to kind of meet the digital, evolving digital needs of your own operation. And so uh, today is an operator roundtable and access control. We've covered that, but we also have a couple other sessions that will be coming up that are going to be on the same kinds of concepts, but for marketing websites. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of today's presentation. But I want to jump right in and introduce our panelists. So I've got two folks on the call here. Uh, Calvin Bird, who's the CFO of Bird's Mini Storage, and Miles Fluckgard, the CTO of KO Storage. And so uh, I wanted to give them an opportunity to just quickly introduce themselves and tell them a little bit about their operation so you guys kind of know who you're hearing from. So, uh, Calvin, would you mind introducing yourself first? Yeah, thank you. So my name is Calvin Bird. Uh, we operate um, in North Georgia. Uh, we started in 1997. We um, have bought, sold, and, and built, uh, but we're at about eight facilities right now and we have a portable division that we operate and um, we've uh, just enjoyed being in the self-storage industry and uh, looking forward to the today's discussion thank you calvin kevin would you mind confirming i had someone say i'm having severe audio issues are you hearing me okay i just want to make sure is that someone else yes, or is I'm, that i'm hearing you good yes ma'am okay Okay, cool. I'll work with that person on the side. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miles, what about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, about KO Storage. Yeah, hey, everybody. My name is Miles Flaghart, the CTO for KO Storage, and I am predominantly lead and am a liaison between the operational side and the tech side um, of KO Storage. And I come from about 10 plus years operational experience within the industry. When I was brought on with KO, it, it was the perfect storm um, being, being able to marry the, the technology and the self-storage operations to really bolster the company and push the industry and, and KO storage forward. But um, we predominantly are here, we're based out of Minneapolis, but we've been growing from the Midwest and we are close to coast as of maybe six months ago, but we're pushing 130 locations through mergers and acquisitions and continuing to maintain that and leveraging tech as much as we can to optimize not only the experience for tenants, but also the operations for our corporate staff. Great, awesome, thank you. And uh, as you guys see here, right, Calvin and Miles are both uh, mentioned kind of as technology as a big part of kind of what they're trying to do here. And so this is why we wanted to have them on today and to be able to discuss in particular kind of how access control fits into that broader um, scheme of using technology, both for the internal and the external purposes. 
So, so guys, I say let's let's jump right into it. Um, one of the questions I just kind of want to start with, it's intentionally high level um, and broad to start, is you know we hear a lot about how access control is kind of slowly becoming the face of your business in this new world. And I know we discussed this a little bit, but for the for the audience, what we mean by this is you know traditionally walk-in traffic was well over 50% of the traffic for for most facilities. And so what that meant was your manager who was there on site was often the face of your facility. Um, but in this new world where folks are kind of coming in from online move-ins and phone-based and um, all these kinds of other digital sources, a lot of the times with the, especially if they're doing a contact, contactless move-in, uh, your access control is kind of the first point of contact to be able to create a positive experience for your tenants and make sure that they actually know how to get in and whatnot. Um, and so I kind of want to just uh, throw this, I'll, I'll throw the first question over to Calvin, but just to give you, um, I'd love to hear, is this kind of how you guys are thinking about the world too? Like, how do you see access control in terms of uh, its role of, in your facility in this new digital world? So, yeah, we've, we kind of started in 2005 with our first unmanned location um, and through the evol evolution of the the industry and technology, the access control was the like the point where it was how do we do an unmanned store and it there were, really wasn't that many good options back then and and thankfully technology with the access control the cameras uh it's it's kind of become a seamless thing now where you can pull up to the gate um rent a unit get gain access within you know 30 seconds pay your bill and your you, your access will be opened. Um, so you'll, because you know most of us all probably lock their gate codes after a certain delinquent time. But but having that ability for your access control to to talk to your software um, is just is really critical. Um, whether it's a move in, someone paying a late bill to gain access immediately, that way they don't have to take up some of your employees' time. Um, so we, we think it, the technology that's come along has just, it's made it possible to do a lot of things and there's a lot of cool things in the works with other operators, um, miles and them with as many stores they have, I'm sure they've got some, some beta stuff they're working on, but it's just, it's amazing to me with technology, how it, you can just change an industry like this one has. So, yeah. Yeah, and Miles, I, I am gonna, uh, Calvin, I want to come back to you on something you said there in a moment, but Miles, I do want to give you a chance to kind of respond to, to Calvin's point, you know, you guys are even significantly more automated than, than a lot of the operators out there. So how do you guys think about access control as part of your broader technology portfolio? I mean, you hit the nail on the head with just the fact that it's becoming the new phase of the business. Um, the industry has been so antiquated over the last 10, 15, 20 years, uh, like Calvin mentioned, like 2005, you start seeing that tech and then the pandemic over the last two years really just pushed that timeline up. Um, so it's cool to see the access control getting the brevity that it would actually require in order to maintain the experience for the tenants. Um, I mean, that you even pair that with security and that peace of mind for the tenant to make sure that they are comfortable leaving their personal belongings at the location that you're providing for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Thank you, guys. Um, and Calvin, to come back to something you said, because I do think it's interesting. Um, you and I were talking a little bit about how kind of you've 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 run the gamut on access control, right? Over the years, you've tried all kinds of different solutions. You've gone to the non-internet based at all, though, to the kind of you know early days of it, all the way to the what we would call kind of these fully integrated experiences now, where like access control lives in your facility management software, and it all just kind of runs as one. Would you mind kind of walking us through what that journey looked like for you and kind of what, what, what were the reasons you were kind of shifting from one to the other and, and what does the experience look like today? So kind of when we started in 97, it was, um, we opened it at seven or eight in the morning whenever we went by and then at nine or 10 o'clock at night, we'd drive by and manually shut it. Um, we had a person living on site, they would open it. Then we went to a, just a, a simple keypad uh, that you stored one number and everybody had the same number. Uh, and then, then came along the somewhat integrations, uh, probably, we probably went to that in maybe the early 2010 era. And, uh, you know, you'd have the, it would integrate as long as everything was working perfectly. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So you had to make sure everything was uh, connected and, and sometimes it would take 10 minutes to update and sometimes it would or wouldn't. But uh, and then moving forward to today and in the last several years where you get that fully integration where you you don't have two softwares running, you have one and and you can go in and see stuff inside the actual tenant uh, portal. It just it makes finding stuff a lot easier and you don't especially for multiple locations, you don't have to run and get on that computer and check the who entered and all that stuff. So um, there's a lot to be said for a fully integrated software piece. Um, there's some, you know, there's definitely some scary points to that, but there's there's a lot more benefit uh, in my mind than uh, than there is drawback. So it's it's made managing multiple facilities, even on a small level, a lot easier uh, with the fully integrated uh, systems. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, and Miles, I, I want to ask you a question to kind of build off of what Calvin's saying there, because I know uh, you and I were talking about, you know, that you're thinking about the world in a similar way, but um, uh, what are some of the things as you think about access control? And again, you know, just for context, Miles is running some some pretty heavily automated facilities, um, not entirely unmanned across the portfolio. But what are some of kind of the critical things when you think about automation and the role of access control that you feel like operators should be taking advantage of? Because the reality is there's a lot of folks that are still in kind of the early days of what Calvin was um, talking about in his access control setup, right, where there's not a full integration between software. And so what are some of those key components people should be thinking about if they're in that situation and they're thinking about exploring maybe moving over into an automated world? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just the ability to um, have a solution that's fully integrated and that efficiently meets the needs for the tenant while maintaining simplicity as much as possible for the operator um, to kind of build off of what Calvin previously said. I mean, when you're using different software, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen this regardless of if it's storage or personal life or wherever, but you get one product and then you try to get another product and then you put them together and they don't always work 100% the right way because they were necessarily weren't built for what you're looking to, to provide or have. Um, yep. And that's, that's the beauty of really getting a fully integrated solution from not only the hardware perspective, but the software perspective and being able to have both of them. Um, like Calvin said, I mean, the ability to, from a delinquency perspective, um, automating the SMS or an email to a new renter, um, when they immediately rent, the code's active, it's good to go and they can just go get their space. Um, we have a, we have a, call center that predominantly handles all of the tenant communication. So any tenant can call in, do a quick ID verification, and then they'd be able to um, provide that tenant with the gate code or assist in anything that may come up for that. So being able to just have everything seamlessly work together is probably the biggest function or feature that would be beneficial. And then as you tailor it to your operational need, whether you want to SMS upon gate code request or even Maybe some tenants are very particular and they want to know every single time that their gate code is being used that you can build that out very easily. And then those are predominantly sent per the, the tenant request to where they would want. Um, there's a lot of features and it really depends on how you want to operate and, and maintain your tenant base to um, really bring the simplicity and security for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, I, Miles, one of the things you mentioned there, and it's actually related, super related to a question we've got twice now in the last couple of minutes here. So I do want to shift over and throw a little bit of a curveball to you guys here. Um, you know, a lot of the times when we talk unmanned, um, rightfully so, there is a fear associated with the concept, right? And that fear is that, you know, people are kind of the secret sauce to my business and they are going to be, you know, they're critical in making sure that I'm providing a good tenant experience. Um, and could not agree with you guys more on that, to be clear. There are people where an unmanned business makes a lot of sense, but for a lot of folks, um, kind of backing off from unmanned but still relying on automation is realistically more of the right approach. And, uh, you know, us three were actually talking about this just a bit ago, right before we were starting, about how, 
you know, that is exactly how Miles, for example, thinks about the world, even though Unmanned was where they were kind of starting, they've started to introduce people back into the process. So I want to give both Calvin and Miles kind of an opportunity to articulate how they think about the role of real people in a heavily automated kind of operation. Uh, you guys are both uniquely equipped, I think, to speak about that. So maybe I'll throw that over to Calvin first. Does it think, you know, as it relates to access control, how do you think about that? So, you know, we've, I've never, we've always had a hybrid approach. So we have, uh, generally we have one or two store. We technically right now we have four stores that are manned and four stores that are unmanned. Uh, but we've always had a balance. Sometimes we've had four stores manned and seven or eight stores that's unmanned. But I, I don't necessarily look at it as, as, I know it's that's the term unmanned. I don't consider that. It's you know there's a there's a sign at each one of them that are that do not have a, a an employee on on the premises. It's got a phone number. It's got an, an a website that you can go to and rent. You can call. You're still going to talk to your employees, or you know some of them are going to go fully online, which you know they they're not necessarily looking to have that interaction. Um, but if they, if you have that number there and it rings to your employees, we treat it as like they're standing in front of us, you know, Hey, make sure you're smiling on the phone, give them that comfort level. And with the technology of the, the, the access control and technology of, of, um, the cameras that we have now, we can, we can, our employees can pull it up on the screen and say, Hey, you know, I see you sitting there in the white truck. You know, not only is that kind of touching them in a way where you can, you may not like can physically see them, but you have this like connection now. Oh, oh, they can see me. So I feel more comfortable about this situation. So that's, that's kind of how we do it with the access control and the technology. And, and then that's the thing, like when they're there and they're sitting in front of your gate and they rent the unit, we never have to think about it. it as soon as they hit rent and pay, whether it's online or calling one of your employees at another store, time they walk to the keypad, the, it works. And that's what you want. You want the access control to be a non-issue because when it is, it's an issue. <laughs> we all know that. We've all had the gate not open when somebody's at there, at the gate or inside the gate. And that's, you want it to be one of those things where it's, yeah, it's there, but you don't think about it. So that's yeah. kind of how we do it, a little, little hybrid type deal. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's funny you say that, Calvin. Um, just calling back to a little personal experience, I've been doing a lot of uh, some interviews with some operators of storable clients and the phrase it just works is by far the most common phrase we hear with access control right that's what people are looking for so what you said makes a lot of sense it should be automated but most importantly it can't break down it should just work yeah I love that Miles then, what about you oh sorry go ahead Calvin no no I'm just saying the midnight phone calls are not happy when they're stuck inside <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah what about you uh, Miles yeah, I mean, I, I think from us, I mean, we do, we have opened up our unmanned to more of that hybrid approach, and it wasn't necessarily the customer experience or the um, the operational aspect, but it was more of the scalable growth and just how quickly we've grown. We've realized that the benefit of having at least a presence there sometime during the week has has effectively been able to put us in more in line to segue any of the older tenants and be more familiar and comfortable with the um, the unmanned or the more automated type facilities. And um, I mean, we saw it over the last couple of years that this is the trend the industry is going. And I think you mentioned Matt earlier when we were just kind of preparing um, before the call. I think it's there's an increase in online rentals, but then we haven't really seen that taper drop off quite as much as the anticipated pre pre pandemic type instance. So um being able to kind of bridge that gap and and um and have just that maintain maintaining that's that small town or small uh company feel of that face-to-face -face interaction like calvin said whether it's leveraging a camera and saying hey i see you're in the white suv or the white truck or um an id verification and maybe there's a quick snippet on the previous conversation so you could check in from hey you mentioned you got a uh, a new car how's that going and then kind of expedite and, and meet the the need 
because um, you can still have that great interaction with somebody that is either over the phone or even over email. It's just we're, as, as an entire society, we're getting better and better with that and more comfortable with that. Um, because it's not just self-storage. I mean, you look at most industries and it's it's moving more and more to that unmanned or more automated type of um, solution. Yeah. Yeah, and I think something you said there, Miles, is another thing I hear pretty frequently in this space, which just like um, the, the need for options, right? Because every tenant is different. So a lot of the times people will think about their, their operations as one singular thing and it's only going to be unmanned or it's only going to be with people in the office. But the reality is, certain people, depending on what their comfort level is with the technology, might want someone to be able to pick up the phone and talk to. Other people might not want to ever see anyone at all, and they do all online, and they go and they get to their unit without ever seeing a person. And that's important that you're meeting kind of both of their needs, right? Um, so um, I, I want to transition to this concept of, and Miles, you started to touch on it, but it's it's the, 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 the future of access control. So um, uh, a lot of what we spend our time thinking about is kind of looking to what some of the other industries who are kind of uh, ahead of us in terms of like the, the the access control space and kind of what we're seeing over there that folks are doing and kind of thinking about what do we need to bring over to the self-storage industry that we think will, will actually help increase that experience. Um, I'm curious to hear from your guys' POV, though, uh, you know, not from a technology provider, but just straight from the operator. What are some of the things that you guys are kind of hoping come into the access control space or that you feel like it would be a, a big improvement to your operations uh, in the coming, you know, years? Yeah, I mean, I think um, one of the things that we've seen already start start, start pushing over with uh, more leveraging. Everyone's got a cell phone nowadays, right? being able to leverage the Bluetooth technology or leverage the close proximity of, of being able to manage everything. And then right in line with that, with the access control, being able to um, maintain that efficiency and automation for the tenant. So they didn't, at that point, they don't need to remember the gate code. It's just their login on their phone. Um, oh. Same login that they could go in, manage their account, pay their bill, rent another unit. So more of that all in one type of a suite solution um and it, it's it's cool to see that there's it's entering the market within self storage but it it's one of those things that there have been bugs there have been inherently any new technology is going to have um those interesting aspects of cool let's get through the the work work through the process and then really optimize and come out with a, that that fully featured product by these kind of conversations where we're talking with multiple operators and getting feedback throughout everything so it is really cool to see the the change of technology. Um, the one big thing, I mean, I don't know how much of an impact this is going to have for self storage immediately, but just Web three and the blockchain is going to be very interesting to see what sort of leveraging functionality that can be taken from there. Um, I'd be surprised if we saw anything from there within the next three years, but um, very cool to see more more full featured securities and um, the back end operation specific security to maintain the tenant experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you mind, um, uh, Miles, just at least for the layman's perspective, kind of unpacking um, the, the the blockchain piece that you brought up? I haven't heard that concept before, and I, I suspect that that's uh, something. Um, well, it, it's one of those things that's kind of like a side passion of mine. It's not really something that sure. I've seen that could directly impact self-storage industry immediately, but mm -hmm. the the layman's aspect of it is that it is a much more secure form of data storage and the ability to maintain better um, security and, and backups and, and anything when you're talking about the ability to um, maintain efficiency and security for anything that's, that's um, a relevant data piece, i.e. Yeah. the gate code or um, a lot of it's predominantly circled or circling right now around e-commerce and the cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. But being able to maintain and have that ownership or have that security piece of leveraging it, I don't know what level from an operation perspective, maybe it's just going to go right into the financial piece of the industry. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, right. it is very cool. And it's, it's, it's still at the beginning of, of really entering the entire society as a, as a whole. So. Um, Really cool to see how that's going to transition and spread its its wings out through other industries, not just the financial markets. Cool. Yeah. Well, there's a little homework assignment for everybody out there on the call if you want to learn a little bit more. 
Um, uh, and Calvin, I, I want to get to you uh, uh, on, on the same topic in a second, but one thing you mentioned there, Miles, I actually will throw this question to Calvin, though. I'm curious, um, are you guys kind of starting to explore, Miles, you talked about the phone being kind of the critical piece that everybody's got one in their pocket. So the, the ability to have that as kind of your unique identifier to be able to grant you access or to be able to troubleshoot an issue or to reach out to someone is so critical. Um, so one of the questions that came in is kind of related to that, which is this idea of Bluetooth locks. Um, and so those are starting to pop up a little bit more. I'm hearing a lot more about that in the industry. Some folks are installing those on units, some aren't. So Calvin, I'm curious to you, you, you got a little smirk going already. Uh, how are you guys thinking about the, the, the remote managed uh, padlocks right now? Uh, I guess I'm gonna be a little more old school right now. I'm not <laughs> jumping on that train just yet. Um, I remember back in the day, uh, this was probably in the early 2000s when everybody wanted to do an alarm on each door. Uh, we did not do that. And I, I went to a facility that did, and there was a lot of issues. Um, technology's come a long ways, and I'm not knocking it. Uh, the cost for us, uh, retrofitting and even building, I, I don't know if we're quite there yet. Um, I would rather it get to the point to where, and, and you know, I'm going to show – I do enjoy technology, but that one is, I, I'd like to see it play out a little bit longer, but I would love to get to the point to where on the, the gate access, um, the to have the ability, the NFC is where I would look for versus Bluetooth, um, because you, I don't care if you're an Apple, an Android, Samsung, whatever, you all the phones have NFC with pay, which I, the COVID has really just, took that and shot that through the roof, which I love it. I use it all the time when I can, but, but I would love to see able to be able to have like a, you know, Apple's talked about their keys for the doors of your house. You can put that in your Apple wallet. I would love to see that technology get there. Cause I think that's kind of going back to the blockchain. I don't know much about that, but I think that's a lot more secure of a, a piece than, than the Bluetooth. Um, not saying it does, it can't work. I just, there's too many variables and what happens when it goes offline. And, and I just, I'm going to stick to the lock and key <laughs> for right Fair now. Enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, and real quick, that's, that's the exact piece that I, I'm talking about as far as just the, the, the high cost and barrier to entry for Bluetooth or NFC retrofitting an entire facility or the intermittent downtime that we see. Um, we've got to the point now where access control is predominantly, it just works. Um, and the, the benefit of that, we just need to get there for Bluetooth or more NFC automation, whether it's Bluetooth, NFC, something else, who knows. But the high barrier to entry and then the uncertainty behind the um, reliability of it, we're still working through all of that. I mean, just as an entire industry. So the more that we see test cases and additional products, the more it'll, it'll really button up and then become much more... Uh, feasible both operationally and financially to to start entering those um, those automations. Yep, makes a lot of sense. Um, Calvin, I wanted to give you a, an opportunity too, as you kind of think about the future of access control. We talked a little bit about some of those things you just you you just laid out. Is there anything else kind of on your mind, or kind of what you're thinking? Maybe the next even couple of years look like. Maybe not the next ten, you know. But um, what are you looking towards? Um. So I. Like I said, I, I love technology and I'm, I'm ready to be a guinea pig in most situations. Uh, but access control is one of those where um, it's it's hard to change when something's working so well. I do believe the phone is the key. Um, I, I don't know if I'm sold on this. I know there's through the years that is idea of everybody downloading an app. Um, I, I don't know if I'm really sold on the, the app thing. I, I think I would much rather it be um, be more of a, in a NFC where it's, and I know when I say I don't want an app, and, and then you're putting something in your Apple wallet or Google wallet, whatever. So that you, you're you still going to have to put something on your phone. Um, but but then but when you go to the app, you know, everybody have to have their own brand and then, you know, people that have multiple different stores. So I, there's still some barriers. I think like Miles said, the phone is, and there may be something in a couple of years that we've never even heard of that pops up with technology, but um, 
I, I think the phone part would be the key. And I, and I can't decide, like I go back and forth, like when you drive up and the phone's in your pocket, do you just want the gate to open for the customer? Or do you want them to have to take the phone out and press it on the, or get close to the keypad? Like those kind of, I think about it and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know re really which way I would like it because there's benefits to both of them. Um, so it's, um, I think it's exciting because the way technology is going and the way the storage industry is embracing technology now, um, it's definitely an exciting time to be in it uh, because I, I, you know, we can talk next year and this may be all the stuff we've been talking about. We, we no, nobody may have keypads then, but, <laughs> but, um, but COVID has definitely increased the online and the, the, it's made the unmanned facilities a very popular because when we started it, we were told by several people, Oh, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. People need to see somebody need to see somebody, especially yeah. in the country. Like they got to talk to somebody. But so far, I think the good Lord, it's it's panned out, and uh, the pandemic has really opened up a lot of eyes. So, but um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I definitely want to see something happen with the phones. I'm not really sure what, but uh, uh, there's a lot of smart people out there that'll figure it out, and I'll I'll be glad to jump on. Whatever it is, all right. Well, guys, hey, thank you so much for your time, both you guys, Calvin, Miles. We really appreciate you guys coming on for this kind of thing. I know we've got a bunch of questions we didn't get a chance to get to, but like I mentioned at the top of the call, we've got your email address, so we'll be following up with you guys on the side. But it just goes to show that, you know, kind of your guys' expertise, your view of the world is something that, um, you know, helps a lot of people kind of navigate what's going on in the industry and how you think about the access control space. So, you know, we appreciate you taking the time to come uh, talk with us today. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate you having us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, real quick, um, uh, we already, like I said, you know, we've been answering a couple questions throughout the day. Unfortunately, we are already a couple minutes over, so I don't want to spend a, a lot more time. I'll be respectful of everyone's time. So I'm going to kind of shift past this. But I did just want to kind of uh, give a little bit of a plug to kind of what's coming next for our Do More webinar series. So we appreciate you all joining us today for the Operator Roundtable on Access Control. Uh, but up next, we are starting to shift um, towards marketing websites. So very similar to what we did on Access Control last month, we're going to be doing a deep dive on marketing websites and kind of talking about what are all of the different pieces of technology and services and things that are available to you that you can kind of use to help either simplify your operations or create a really great tenant experience uh, among some other things. So that'll be on March 25th. We'll be sending out some emails so that you guys are aware of that. But if you wanted to mark it on your calendar now, uh, feel free to do so. And then in April, we're going to be doing something similar to what we did today, but for marketing websites. We're going to be having a couple people on that think a lot about their websites and what it's done, you know, post-COVID for them in this digital world. And so we'll be spending a little time picking their brain and understanding how they think about the world. But with that, just wanted to say thank you to everybody in attendance too. So uh, we, you know, we do this because we continue to hear from you guys that you guys love to hear from operators and from Storable how we think about the world and whatnot. And so we would only do this, we only do this because we're, you guys tell us you're interested. And so we appreciate you so much for joining us and being able to, you know, submit these questions and these chats as we go. Um, if anything does come up between, you know, as soon as this webinar ends, if a question comes to your mind, you're like, dang, I wish I would have asked that. No problem. If you email webinars at storable.com, we've got a team of people behind that too that can help you guys get connected with Calvin and Miles or myself, and we can trace down some answers for you on, on all this stuff or anything else just kind of top of mind for you. So, But with that uh, being said, just want to say thank you one more time and hope everybody has a great weekend, great President's Day on Monday, and uh, we'll see you guys next month for a Marketing Websites Deep Dive. All right. Take care.